the beginning of the uh, 20th century, our understanding of the atomic nature of atom and the orbits of electrons was enhanced by uh, Niels Bohr and many others who came after him. And we learned that electrons uh, are confined to orbit around the nucleus in certain discrete orbits called orbitals. N equals one orbit is the, the base orbit, and then the N equals two orbit is the first excited state. The N equals three state is the second excited state. So when an electron absorbs some kind of energy, some kind of photon of energy, the electron jumps to a higher orbit, or it could jump to the third orbit, or it could jump to the fourth orbit. And when the electron jumps back down, depending on where it jumps, it releases a certain amount of energy. And if that energy happens to lie in the visible spectrum, the visible spectrum that our eyes can see, which goes from roughly 400 to 700 nanometers. Our eyes are sensitive to that wavelength of light, 400 to 700 nanometers, which corresponds to a certain energy of light waves. So if that light, if that, if that jump in energy of the electron is equivalent to the energy of a light wave, we see a certain visible light that is distinct for that atom. So we learn in the atomic theory that hydrogen gives particularly four lines known as the Balmer lines. And those are 656, 486, 434, and 410 nanometers. So when you do the physics of this and the math of this, you will see that the hydrogen atom gives these lines known as Balmer line 656. That will appear red. 486 will lie in the green-blue range, so it, will, it might appear green. Sometimes it will appear like tur turquoise. 434, 410 will appear violet or purple. So you, uh, you, it will look purplish or violet. So sometimes it might be hard to see the 410. It might be at the edge of just our visible strength. So you might see these three, but definitely you will see 434, 486, 656. So that's, that is what we're going to show today. We're also going to show the lines of other atoms. Uh, particularly, I want to show you the lines of helium. And I want to show you the lines of neon. Neon has a lot of good lines, a lot of lines. Well, it makes sense because if an atom has more uh, electrons, it's going to have more possible jumps that it can make in the visible spectrum. Helium will have more lines than hydrogen because it has two electrons, so it could also make more jumps than hydrogen. Um, the reason I'm focusing on hydrogen, of course, is because it's the most abundant element in the universe by far. Roughly about 90%. 92% of the sun is made up of hydrogen atoms. And uh, same goes true with a lot of gaseous planets. We call those Jupiter-like planets. Those have a high percentage of hydrogen. The second most abundant element is helium. So about 7 to 7.5% uh, of the sun, maybe even a little bit more, would be the helium. And same again goes true with uh, Jupiter and Jupiter-like gaseous planets. So hydrogen, most abundant element. Helium, second most abundant. And then, of course, after that comes other elements. I'm showing you neon because it's one of my particularly favorite uh, lines to show. So over here we've got... Um, we've got... Uh, you can see here... Uh, this is uh, this uh, PASCO model, 610 lines per, uh, per millimeter. This is known as a diffraction grating. Okay? This diffraction grating splits the light into its spectrum, just like we learned in our interference lab. When light goes through a, a grating, when it splits, it splits and it introduces us uh, into interference and diffraction patterns. So you'll see here... I am going to turn on the height. This is the hydrogen gas. 
Okay, I have, uh, I'm putting the hydrogen gas tube here through a, a high voltage. It says danger, do not put your fingers in the sockets when turned on. You will first notice that the hydrogen gas will glow kind of a red pink color. That's the same color that we see in outer space. When we look at a hydrogen nebula that has a lot of hydrogen in it, we see it glowing red. So I'm not gonna pick up the uh, diffraction grating, look through it, okay? Now, if I look to the side, the center one is the tube itself, but if I look to the side, you should see violet and another uh, turquoise and a red looking one. Now, if I bend this, you could begin seeing the pattern repeating. Okay, so you could see another uh, violet, two violets, green and red. So, uh, and then the other one appear on the other side. Okay, red, you could see here the two violets and red. Um, okay, you can see me, I'm gonna tr illustrate it with my finger here. You can see me pointing, that is the violet. This next one is the turquoise. And then this next one over here off to the side is the red. Now next to the violet, you might be able to pick out another one here. Next to it, it's gonna be hard. That's, that's the 410 nanometer one. So 410, 434, 486, 656. And then the pattern continues on both sides. Now let's show the helium lines. Okay, now you're looking at the tube. This tube is helium. This is the same helium that we put in helium balloons and we breathe and it changes our voice. So we have a helium tube and it has a yellowish color. So again, I'm gonna put it next to the spectral, spectrograph, the grading, and you see here a lot more lines. You can see a couple of violets, green, turquoise, yellow, red. Now the Hydrogen did not have a yellow, so that's a very distinct difference. And now you can see another pattern on the side, then the pattern repeating, 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 so it's just continuing. So you can see definitely blue, blue, turquoise, yellow, red. Blue, blue, turquoise, yellow, red. So that pattern is continuing on both sides. So this will be the signature of helium if we see helium in some gas we know that if we see these lines we know that it has helium now this one is my favorite it's neon it's the same neon signs that you see in front of hotels or motels and you see them everywhere as a way of advertising something so if we look through neon gas that we look at the grading you will see a lot of lines, okay? So you'll see here, bunch of oranges, greens, yellows, different shades of yellow, green, on the other side too. And the camera is not even able to pick up all the different possible things that you see. Several yellows, different shades of red, a lot of shades of red, okay? You can see the pattern again, repeating on both sides. So now you see that this study of spectral type is very, very important in physics and astronomy. Thank you.